Hey guys, it's Rafi, and today we are playing a 25-minute game here on <clears throat> on the um, Leechess server here. And um, so far, we're just sticking with the regular principled moves of developing pieces, and we are going to soon castle and hopefully have a great game a couple of options to develop this bishop here g4 f5 all our options Kind of like F5 better. It's a little bit more active. I wonder if I should play Queen C7 followed by E5, or should I play E6 followed by Bishop D6? Probably e6 is best. I could play a move like queen to c7 here, but I just feel like it's not the ideal way to develop. I think the most principled way to play this would be to play bishop d6, followed by castling rook c8, and then maybe playing queen to d7. So, yes, he does make me. Recapture again with the bishop, but by capturing on c5 now, I have removed one of white's pawns from the center. And I'm I'm happy with that. <clears throat> Means that I have a pawn majority, a, sp a larger pawn spawn center, and, and I will definitely use that to my advantage over the next few moves here. A move like knight b4 does come to mind, but I think there's multiple ways that white can defend the c2 pawn, so I'm not going to really spend time with that. I'm just going to develop pieces, rook c8. My idea again is pretty much the same still of trying to actively develop the pieces very quickly. Um, one move that I'm considering playing is h6 to give my bishop some space to retreat back and to stay on this star, uh, strong diagonal here. So that's definitely a move to consider here. Queen e7 also comes to mind, developing a queen to a pretty solid square on e7 and following up with rook to d8.
think I want to save this bishop. Let me waste a tempo to play this h6. Knight takes d4, uh, d5 runs into e4, after which I'm forking, uh, he's forking two pieces. So we pretty much have to take this way. And now I have got an isolated d pawn, which is a potential long term weakness. Um, but I do have to play actively on the e and c files to prove that the d pawn is going to be a strength rather than a weakness so here in this position already the move d4 comes into mind d4 you can't play d5 so after d4 ED, knight takes. Knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, bishop takes b7 at the end. And I'm dropping the b7 pawn. But there might be some ways to get some compensation for that, possibly. I don't know. Anyway, it's too early. Too early for that. Let's just develop our pieces. Let's activate this rook. Let's place our bishop again on the most active diagonal, which is going to be the d6 square on this diagonal here. So he wants to really clamp up on clamp down on this d4 square and also he wants to right now take on f6 and then win the d5 pawn. It's basically his idea. I think the active, the most active way to defend would be to play bishop b4. If knight d2, then bishop f5 repeats the position. After knight d2, there's also bishop d3.
where is the best place to develop our queen? That's the main question now. I'm thinking maybe queen d7 might be a way to go. <clears throat> I want to play moves like knight to e5 next. I think queen e7 seems logical. Bishop takes c5, pawn takes c5. No, bishop takes c5, he has rook takes c5 as well. Hmm. And if b6, then knight takes bishop. Pawn takes. I think I'm going to go with b6. Now I'm just thinking that is there any way that I can capture with the knight or the queen or something like that? I don't think there is, though. I think I have not forced to take with pawn. If queen takes, if knight takes c4, queen takes, do I have any tricks there? Not really. So I'm pretty much forced to take this direction now. But I'm running into some interesting situations now with him taking on f6, followed by trying to gobble up this e-pawn somehow. <clears throat> I'm thinking knight e5 is probably what I'm going to play, but then he has knight f5. And he wins a piece. So I might be forced here to to trade knights with him. And g6 is definitely not a move that I would like to play.
instead of trading rooks off I think I'm gonna keep the rooks. Let's improve this rook to the D file. And this next move, I'm gonna play bishop to E5. And try to trade off one of his bishops. When you have to when your opponent has a bishop pair, one of the things that you wanna do is go ahead and trade a pair of the bishops off just because just so the um, position becomes a little bit more manageable so i think bishop e5 now makes a lot of sense to try to trade off one of these guys <clears throat> But I have a feeling that this D pawn is E pawn is gonna come under some very heavy fire if he takes D4 as happens after I capture on D4. Anyway, he doesn't do that. He instead goes straight for my A7 pawn and offers me this queen trade. I want queen trade, but I want it to happen under my own tar terms, is the thing. So I'm going to bring the queen back to e7, actually. Again, chess is a game of activity, so I want to keep my rooks as active as possible. My rook on e7 does not want to be sitting there and defending the e-pawn. That is not the job of a rook. Rook d2 or rook d3? Don't know. There's also king f8, worth considering.
definitely want to make some room for this king. Now there's some flexibility on which direction my king can can go to. Thinking now might be the opportune time to jump into the d3 square. If he takes, I take. He takes, then I take on a3. Check. Takes check, king, then rook d2. It's also an active way to defend. Great. I have no problems having the more active piece if he chooses to let me. What is the best square for this knight? That's the next question now. Probably something like this. Ooh, rook c7 doesn't look good at all now. Oof. Oh, shoot. Rook c7 is a double attack on the a7 and the d7 pawn. Man. Knight e5, he takes, I check. There is some counterplay, that's for sure. Check king g2, check. There is definitely some interesting stuff here. Let's start with this check. If I play knight here now. This bishop is very much stuck. Check. Let's play another check. 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 Draw. I don't think I had any better than this. <laughs> I don't think I had anything better because he's got an extra pawn and yeah, I think it would be very risky to try to go for something different. Um, yeah, pretty strong player. Alexey Shyanov, candidate master, FIDE rating 2029. 20, wow. Just drew against a candidate master. Let's 
type in Fide. That's him. Oh, oh, that's not him. Alexei Shirov is a grandmaster. That's definitely not him. Alexei Shianov. Chess. Let's look this guy up. Member on chess.com. Very strong player on chess.com as well. Anyway, well, regardless, obviously a very good player. Blitz rating 2364, rapid 2356. Classical 2187. Very strong player. Let's analyze. and see how we could have played more accurately in this game. Knight f3, I played d5, b3, c5, bishop b2. Play knight f6. The computer is preferring to play f6 followed by e5, totally taking over the center. Very interesting. That's really how you should treat these hypermodern systems a lot of times is just if your opponent is not challenging the center, just take it up. Take the entire thing, which is definitely a, a, not a bad approach. We made three inaccuracies and one blunder. Average centipon loss 17. He made four inaccuracies and one blunder. Average centipon loss 18. G3, knight c6, bishop g2. Yeah, during the game, I was thinking about queen c7 followed by trying to play e5. But didn't do it. Um, instead, played bishop to f5. e6. Rook c8 ideally makes sense because I'm waiting for black white to capture on c5. Um, and rook c8 is a move that I would normally play anyway. So I can definitely see that. Why delaying the castling idea was a... Uh, delaying developing the bishop might not be a bad idea here. Anyway, I just developed. He took. I took. E3. And here I think I castled. Knight d2. <clears throat> Stuck with, again, regular developing moves, trying to activate all of my pieces. During the game, I thought about knight b4, but I thought that he could just defend many different ways, including knight e1, the immediate one that I thought about. So I chose to just continue developing. Pieces, and then he played c4 here. Mm. Thought about bishop d3 here briefly, but didn't play it. Instead, h6. He took on b5. I took back with the e pawn, only option really. Everything else loses. a3. Trying to get some queenside pawns rolling. Continued activating my 
pieces with the rook e8. b4. Try to keep the bishop on the most active diagonals always. So I play bishop to d6. Knight b3. Really the good way to defend the bishop I thought uh, the pawn was to be, play bishop e4, but apparently there were some other options like knight e5. Hmm. How does this work, knight e5? Oh, I'm just putting the knight in between. The, yeah, he, bishop takes f6 does not work anymore now. So the d5 pawn is protected this way. Interesting. But anyway, I chose bishop e4, which is also a really good way to defend. Rook c8. I'm sorry, rook c1. Developed my last piece, connected the rooks with uh, queen, c, queen e7. He popped his knight into the c5 square now. And here I blundered with b6. Wow. I was afraid of taking on a c5. I just thought I would just help his rook get to a more active square on c5 and no good ways of chasing it away either. But turns out b6 is a major blunder. Trying to think of how. Let's see, takes, 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 takes this. Oh, yeah. Definitely missed this sequence because now there is no way to defend e4 anymore. That is for sure. Absolutely missed this little sequence. For sure did not see this. Had he done this in the game, I would have probably lost, honestly. Just a good solid center pawn gone like that. At higher levels of chess, it's not something that typically one can survive and come back from. <clears throat> well, I chose instead to b6, and he, instead of going for this line, he ended up. Taking the bishop, took with pawn, knight. The only thing I could have done here, I think, is taking the knight. Everything else pretty much loses. Took with the bishop. Apparently, oh, his knight before was a blunder. Hmm. Oh, here, b6. Here I'm still very bad after this. This is the same line. Bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, and knight d2. Same thing. But he chose to play this way instead, and now he lost all his advantage. So here, a computer is suggesting to trade off the bishops right away, which I can definitely see why it's suggesting that. Um, because after my next move, he had the opportunity to actually keep the bishops. Yeah, he could have traded off for the knight and gone after my e-pawn also. That's another thing I just realized. The knight is the only defender of this e4-pawn. So I missed that whole idea. But he does give me the opportunity to go ahead and trade bishops now. Which I did. Queen c7, queen e7. I want to trade queens, but under my own terms. He obliges and trades. In the rest of the game, we just kind of shuffled our pieces back and forth, honestly. So I activated my rook, putting it on the open file. So I improved my king position a little bit now with king f8, bringing the king towards the center, which is something that you definitely want to do in the end game. Now I played g6, giving my king some breathing room, stopping any kind of back rank ideas. Rook c4 allows me this check. Takes, check. 
went this way first, but I immediately jumped in on f2 pawn, came back, gave another check, blocked with the bishop. And now I played rook a1, thank you, attacking the a pawn now. So the engine here is saying to play rook c7. And if I play rook takes a3, I bet the move would be bishop c4 going up to my f7 pawn. So let's see, let's play it out. So here, if I take, then this now, this is this pawn is a trouble. Another kind of draw that could happen. Oh no, it's not a draw. Never mind, he's winning. Yeah, this is definitely bad for black. Well, he just came back. So then I played knight. Yeah, I played knight d7 and I realized, oh crap, he's a double attack with rook c7. But it turns out that my rook and knight combination, along with his bishop being stuck, gave me so much counterplay that I could simply get away with giving up the a-pawn. So I played the most active move for my knight, which was e5. He took. And here I jumped in for the draw. I knew that I would at least get some sort of strong initiative, if not the draw. I wasn't exactly sure if this would lead to a draw. But... Yeah, this is how the game ended. But had he say he didn't want the draw, say he goes here. I check. Say he goes here, then what would I have done? Yeah, he'd have to come back pretty much. There's no way out of this. Yeah, definitely a draw. Hmm. Very interesting. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Definitely was a good game against a very strong candidate master. And um, hope to catch you guys in my next video. Leave me in the comments if you guys have any specific types of videos you guys want to watch for the next one. See ya.